So I'm going to be totally honest with you, okay? I've never ever even considered getting a drone that wasn't made by DJI. I didn't even really know that other companies existed. But then these guys, Altel, were like, hey, Johnny, do you want us to send you a drone? Um, and usually I say no, but then I suddenly thought, yeah, actually, go on then, because I think my subscribers are probably going to be as curious as I am as to whether a non-DJI drone is any good. And spoiler alert, I've had a little go and it's pretty impressive. Now, there's actually a really good reason why I've come to this exact spot here in the Brecon Beacons. This is the last place that I was with my DJI Mini 2 before I took it up to a cabin near Scotland and it fell in the river and it was gone forever. Uh, so this gives me a good frame of reference to compare this drone to the Mini 2. And I do that because while this isn't a DJI drone, it definitely borrows a lot from DJI drones. This is the Artel Evo Nano Plus. This is a very small, lightweight drone designed for travel weighing in at just under 249 grams. They are quoting about 28 minutes of flight time on a single battery charge, and while I can't confirm that exactly, it definitely felt somewhere around that mark. It has a 3-axis gimbal as you would expect and can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second. Now the interesting thing is that before they sent me this drone, I was about to buy the DJI Mini 3 and I didn't buy it. I thought, no, I'll hold off and I'll see whether this is enough for me to not buy the DJI Mini 3. So while we're comparing Mini drones, this actually does have something that I absolutely need from a Mini travel drone and that is the ability to charge the batteries via USB. The kit that I got that they sent me uh, came with three batteries, just like the Flymore kit, and uh, you can charge those via USB. It charges them sequentially, so you plug them in, press charge, and it will charge through all three, not all at the same time. That would be amazing. But I need that because when I'm driving about and I'm running out of batteries, I need to be able to charge them while I'm traveling to my next spot. So charging them in the car is really important. Now you can get the um, in-car chargers for the bigger batteries, but I find them to be too slow that they just don't really charge the batteries. It's worth noting the micro SD card slot and the USB-C port are both exposed, but the whole drone folds down conveniently small. The drone's lightweight means that it blows about a little bit in the wind, but the stabilization seems to hold up in the recording, and I guess that's what matters. So it's about to uh, run out of batteries. And it does the, uh, the thingamajig that you can catch it in the air, just like DJI. So if you turn it upside down, uh, that will cut out the, uh, the propellers, which is pretty handy if you're in a boat or something like that. As an ex-DJI Mini 2 owner, I couldn't quite get past just how familiar this drone felt in my hand. But there is something very, very different about it. Now, I don't know if it's like bikes where, you know, bikes are all just bikes. They're all basically the same. It could be like that with drones. It could be just this is the way that drones are, but this very much reminds me of the DJI Mini 2. While I really like the size of this drone, it definitely does replace my Mini 2. I wouldn't buy another Mini 2. This is absolutely fine. The thing that I'm not into is the controller. It's absolutely massive and it doesn't really fold away or anything. Like these little um, these little stick things, like when I take them off, which I need to do to put it in my bag, I don't really have anywhere to put them. It might be that I'm just stupid and I can't find the bit that you're supposed to put them in, but there doesn't appear to be anywhere for me to put them. Uh, so, you know, if you use these Altel drones um, or Altel drones, let me know if I'm just being an idiot, but I can't find anywhere to put them. Likewise with the cable, if I take the phone off from the thing, look. Now, this slots down to there, just like that. Now, there's a cable in the back, which does get squashed a little bit as you press it, but if I take the cable out, I kind of don't have anywhere to put it. And I nearly messed up this video by leaving with the cable in my bag. So I'm not really sure about that. This controller definitely feels like uh, they couldn't do what DJI do. I don't know if they have patents or something on their, uh, on their controllers that means that it's hard for other companies to make fold-away controllers, but this, this doesn't work quite as well. The flip side of that, of course, is that it's actually a very, very comfortable controller. And in a lot of ways, I prefer it to actually fly with, but not to pack away. But when you turn off the drone, it actually leaves the last picture in gray on the screen, which I really like because that lets you know exactly where it was. Now, I don't know if the DJIs do that. Let me know in the comments if they do. 
but mine doesn't uh, and I really like that because it lets you know the last place it was and the last thing it saw so if you lose it that really helps. So I have noticed it's acting a little bit strange. It's very fussy. If I if I want to hold it and let it take off from my hand, it keeps saying aircraft self-checking, take off later. I think that's because it's maybe wobbling a little bit. Um, but also every now and then it comes up and says aircraft disconnected. You can't probably can't see that, but it says aircraft disconnected on the screen, even though it's right here, both things are on, and it should be connected. So it's acting a little bit buggy. <laughs> It might surprise you, but I don't really tend to mess around too much with picture settings. I'm not terribly good at colour grading, and for some reason, my photo editing passion just doesn't translate to video. Maybe I will improve, but I usually just turn things on and press record, and in that regard, this drone looks great straight out of the box. It doesn't have a log picture mode, but as you can see, it's capturing the sky and the shadows pretty well. It can shoot up to 30 frames per second in 4K and 2.7K and 60 frames per second in Full HD. I read somewhere that they're adding tracking to the drone. Now, I could get it to track me while I was using the pre-programmed movements that this drone has. Okay, so now it's going to track. So in three, two, one. These are some features that I use on my Air 2S quite a lot, and I found that these kind of pre-programmed the movement and the recording ended really abruptly. I may have just been using it wrong, but it didn't seem to work as continuously as my Air 2S. Something I've just clocked is that it fits really nicely in the pocket of my Shimoda bag, which could be pretty handy. So the question is, is this enough for me to hold off from buying the DJI Mini 3? And I'll answer this in two parts, okay? This drone part, yeah, I think it's great. It's tiny, it's snappy, it flies pretty nicely, and it seems to have all the features that the Mini 2 had, but the picture just looks a little bit better to my eye. This part of it though, no, I'm not a big fan of this controller, especially since I could buy the, uh, you know, the controller where I don't have to put my phone on it, the DJI I've got. But I think the bottom line is I'm gonna carry it as my drone. Even though I've got the Air 2S, I've got the Mavic 2 Pro. I'm just gonna carry this, that's how fickle I am and how much I will put packing something over picture quality. So thanks for watching guys, definitely let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, definitely do that. And if you do, I will see you in the next video. Take care.